Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about domain improvements for shadow foundations. In today's discussions, we are going to concentrate on type of shadow foundations, why we need to improve the ground, what is the procedures that can be adapted in improving the grounds, the type of materials that we can use to improve the grounds, and so on. Let's see. First, what is the shallow foundation means? Now, there are two types of foundations basically. They are shallow foundations and deep foundations. If I let to know the deep foundations, those are the pile foundations. Basically, those pile foundations are considered as deep foundations. Shallow foundations are rough, rough foundations, bad footings, combined footings, strip footings, strap footings, all those are considered as a shallow foundations. Right now, I think it's clear to you what are shallow foundations. Right, so let's start with the ground improvement. Now, you know, the ground is not as we wish. No, we always expect very hard ground to place our foundations, but it is not like that. In practice, in reality, the ground will be weak. Now, how do we identify the ground conditions? For that, we have to do the borehole investigation. Before your construction work, you have to investigate the condition of the ground. So, underneath the condition of the soil layers, we do not know. There will be layers like this. So, condition of this each layer has to be known. So, we can drill a hole like this. We can drill a borehole. Right? You can take the SPT, SPT and the material samples and all that then we know what sort of material is there and also what sort of strength that soil can be taken so based on this investigation soil investigation we might observe a weak soil layer something like this or this layer is weak right so once we identify this now we have to think about what to do with the foundations there may be two options based on this condition of these layers one is as I explained you one first is the shallow shallow foundation second option is the deep foundation so deep foundations like piles will be constructed now no need to input the ground and all that you can cast the piles and you can rest the structure on piles deep foundation have a certain cost when compared to the shallow foundations but if you put a bad footing there is much less cost compared to it is much less cost compared to the pipe so we have to try with the bad footing is possible right in that case if soil is weak up to a certain level we can improve that particular soil and make the bad foundations now say we need to construct a bad footing in a particular location right so you have to construct bad footing like this but what happened is this area soil is weak right so we need to improve this so this can be examined from the soil investigation report and also we might get the recommendations on depths that we need to improve in addition that you also can do this judgment now you know the pressure bulbs right these pressure bulbs will be created from this right based on the loading and the dimension of the footing this can be determined so basically this pressure bulb right this pressure bulb we maintain about 1.5 right? so we consider the effective pressure bulb like uh, the certain certainly influence pressure bulb is like 1.5 b so in this area we need to have a good soil right we need to have a good soil in this area you know this pressure pressure will be more like this so this area will be pressured with the putting loads so when we come to this length this length will be much higher than the it is at the putting bottom level so we at the 1.5 d we have a higher area so this area if it is weak we can improve so this is the one of the method we use to 
identify up to what depth we need to improve the gout. But this is not certain value. 1.5 is B is not certain value. So depending on the soil or depending on the condition of the ground, this may vary. This is a kind of value we decide or we used to judge on the condition of the ground to which level we have to do this excavation for the government loan. But as I mentioned to you, so you should not rely on this. You have to rely on the condition of the ground that is soil layer condition and all that. Also we have to take it into account. Right. Now you see, you know the depth, whatever the method or this method or soil investigation report. Now you know the depth to be excavated and improved. Right. Now when you need to construct a putting like this, first import most important thing is where you need to post place the foundations like this. Right. So below this area we have to improve. Right. So you need to excavate certain depth and then you have to fill it. Okay. Usually this width, this width we maintain 1.2 times B. That is 20% higher than the footing width. That is generally we follow as a general norm. It's not mandatory requirement but as a general norm we Excavate for higher area and 20% uh, much higher area will be excavated for the government floor. Now, one of the important thing we have to discuss here is the water table. See, water table may be somewhere here, maybe somewhere here. So, depending on the level of the water table, we have to determine where to put the footing. Right now, if the water table is a bit higher then we would place the proteins at bit higher level because now if you have a water then it will be much difficult to do the concreting and you have to protect the concrete from the water and so on so it's a bit difficult so what we do is backfilling will be done above just above the water table so there is no issue then with the concrete or the proteins water won't come because water table is below that kind of a thing we basically use in construction of the coating, but it won't be able to practice sometimes because if the water table is very close to the ground surface. In such a cases, you have to add a certain dewatering method or in any ground water mixing with concrete. So the construction practices we have to consider in such a situations, correct construction practices. Right now, we discuss about the depth of the footing excavation and the area of the excavation. How do you determine the sizes? Now, let's see what are the materials we can use for the ground improvements. Mainly, three types of materials are being used. Most common are the corridors or sand and ABC, rubber packing. All those are the common things we used in construction. Corridor or sand is most common, but when it comes to the sand, the sand cost is a bit higher. As a replacement of to the sand, we use the corridors for ground improvement. ABC also can be used for the ground improvement because it's also a really available material. Rubble packing also can be done. Now rubble also good material, especially in the road constructions work, we use rubble for the ground improvements because it's very easy you can put the large rubbles uh, into the ground and large area can be covered with that and you can do the certain compaction using kind of equipment like excavator. So in the buildings we usually use sand corridors or ABC for the ground improvements. We rarely use rubbles. But when it comes to rough foundation or very large area, we could use rubbers. But most, mostly, as I mentioned previously as well, we use the corridor or sand or ABC. Now, let's see how we can compare this. Right? Now, when, you to come to, when it comes to the corridors or sand, we can compact manually or we can compact using plate compactor 
if it is a very large area we can use a roller now in a rock foundation there will be very large area so in such situations we can use the roller to compare but if you have a footing you can use poker vibrator how what is the process of using poker vibrator let me explain the concept then you will see the video we have shared here I can show you video so say this is the excavation so you fill it by corridors to sand so what is this depth usually this depth we maintain around 300 millimeters right now first we dewater this pit right then we allow the water table to rise right? then we allow the water table to reach up to this level right? then we put the poker right we put the poker to vibrate this this is the most easiest and most simple way otherwise you can use you can dewater this and you can use the plate compactor once you place the quarry dust and you can use the plate compactor to compact in that case we have to avoid water table rising now because with the water we can't compact it's very difficult now uh, when you come to the abc you have to use certain method i mean not poke oh, white better you can't use but certain method like plate cup compactor or roller you have to use to compact now let's see a video how we doing the compaction with the poker vibrator. Not like using the plate compactor, by using the poker vibrator you can do the compaction very easily. Right now, you know method of the compacting the back filling or the ground improvement soil. So, we discuss about the compaction method and the compaction process. All those we we'll discuss. Now, completing the level of the ground improvement and foundation level. This also we discuss how to determine the foundation level. If I brief you again, that has to be basically above the water table up to above the water table you have to fill it then you can do the construction very easily today's discussions we discuss about the ground improvement for the shallow foundations we discuss about the methods are available for the ground improvements how to determine the depths and what the sizes of the excavation that has to be done and the materials compaction method compaction process and we are we need to place the foundations. I think we were able to share with you a good piece of knowledge and we hope that you will learn something from our videos. Thank you very much for watching our videos. Let's meet again from new video. Thank you very much.